Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on how to make a car in Autodesk Fusion 360. So thank you so much for your kind words in the past episodes. Um, we did reach 10 episodes and this is, this is the 11th one, which is a big deal. And apologies if you were waiting for the YouTube live today. Unfortunately, I was out um, on the weekend and I came home late from work today and therefore I wasn't able to update on the YouTube that I won't be doing the live today because it has just been quite hectic. Uh, in order to do a live I need a few hours to be free and a little bit of more energy because that live can go on for three to four hours as you've noticed from before. Uh, although they are fun I do require the energy to do it but that's okay uh, I'll make sure next time I keep some slots free so that we can actually do the YouTube live in a more fun way. Another update is that uh, I did post the Q&A over here uh, on Google Forms and it's completely anonymous. You can go ahead and post some questions if you'd like and I'll be answering them in a later video. All right, that being said, I'm going to try and keep this tutorial short and simple uh, just because uh, I'm a little bit tired today, but I wanted to keep up with the consistency of uploading videos on Monday and Thursdays. So let's get cracking right away. So in the previous video, we had worked on the backside over here and we had ended with this... Um, with these four surfaces. And what essentially we did here, we tried doing a bunch of patch, sweep and loft, uh, as well as ruled and offsets. And in some cases, some of the tools worked and some of them didn't, and that was completely fine. Hopefully you saw me struggle, but you saw me struggle with calm, uh, with a calm attitude, and therefore we were able to solve all of the problems on screen without me having to edit anything away, which is always a win. And uh, so fingers crossed, we're gonna hopefully face something similar today where we're trying something and if it doesn't work, that's completely okay. There are always uh, other ways of solving it. So in this tutorial, what I'd like to focus on is this surface over here. So extending up till um, this rear uh, window over here, as well as this surface over here. Okay, and now is probably a good time if you wanted to pause the video, give it a shot yourself and then try it out come back and see how I've done it. And if you've done it differently, please let me know. I have been receiving some comments on how you guys did it differently, which is always, always very, very nice to see. So thank you so much. All right, now's the time to pause the video. So hopefully you paused the video and now you're here to check out what I've done it. So the first thing I wanna do is go back to the back view and you can see that I forgot to trim this surface here in the previous video. Um, so what I'll do is first of all, surface, trim, and we wanna use that green line as the tool. And then I want to take away this one over here and press OK. All right, and we can zoom out and there we go. It's already taken away that little extra surface, which was leaking a little bit beyond our plane of symmetry. OK, so what we'll do now is we'll focus on that surface there. And what I want to do is I actually want to start from the top view this time because we have a nice little shape that we can work with from the top view. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch from the top view. And as always, making sure that our 3D sketch is turned on. So right there, fit point spline. <clears throat> and I want to grab onto that point there. So again, just doing things very similarly to how we've done them before. And I'm going to end the point there. Now again, trying to follow my own advice that I've given before. Before I move the tangents, I'm going to try my best to move the points first. Okay, in 3D space. So that point there is correct. This point obviously is not correct from the, from the back view and obviously not from the side view either. So I'm just gonna press M on my keyboard and I'm gonna drag it up to there. And if you remember correctly, you would have remembered that the three views are not all consistent, um, unfortunately. So let's say that from this angle, it looks correct. From this angle, it also looks correct, but from here, it looks a little bit off, but that's completely fine. Um, as we create these surfaces, as I said, try and use two, a one or two of these dimensions as your fact or your truth, and then work from there. Um, I think another thing I want to do is I don't like where this point is. So I'm gonna finish the sketch and I'm just gonna go back to the previous sketch that we made in the previous video and make a few changes. So edit sketch. <clears throat> and I wanna bring this point a little bit further to where that intersection is. Okay, and let's have a look from the side. I think we want this to be a little bit above. Let's have a look at it from the back. 
Okay, that does look a little strange, so we'll change that to go a little bit to the side. Perfect. Um, so that's good. And that's good as well. So I'm going to go ahead and finish, uh, finish sketch. And now I want to deal with these tangents here. So let's come back to our active sketch, which is the one we've made in this tutorial. And I'm going to start dealing with the tangents now. So just trying to make sure it's as smooth as we can make it. Um, come down. We can build this up a little bit. And from the back, you can see that that looks a little bit interesting. So uh, we can try and minimize how much it moves. OK, so that looks good. And that looks good as well. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. I just want to have a look from the back again. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Just a little bit like that. OK, cool. Um, so our facts in this one are the side view as well as the top view. Okay, so let's make another spline from clicking onto that point there and then going a little bit above the plane of symmetry again because we're going to trim it. And again, before dealing with the tangents, just make sure the point is secure in 3D space. So bring it up a little bit more. That's fine with me. And let's have a look at it from the back. Okay, so that's a little bit above, which is not good. So we'll just bring it down just a little bit. Okay. Okay, and now let's deal with the tangents. So we're going to try and make this tangent as horizontal as possible or vertical as possible um, because it is coming close to the plane of symmetry. And of course, if it's a plane of symmetry, you want things to be... Um, quite straight here and then it sort of flows upwards um, so we'll do that and that looks okay to me let's have a look from the side that is relatively flat which is not good and okay so from this angle we do need it to be a little bit more above so if I bring this back here let's see what happens so I think in, in cases like this, you want to try your best and find a balance. Okay, so one, that's okay with me. And that's a little bit above, but again, we are going to slice it, so that's fine. I think what I'd like to do is add a little bit of curvature. So I'm going to activate the tangent here. Add a bit of curvature because we don't, obviously, this is not going to be a straight line. So we'll add a bit of curvature to make it come as smooth as possible. Okay, next one. We'll go from there till there okay and this is again obviously a straight line and now there's no um these points are now both secure in 3d space so i'm just going to go ahead and activate the tangent already Cool, wonderful. So I'm going to press OK and I'm going to finish the sketch. And again, we can just go ahead and patch this because we have one, two, three, four, five, and it's a closed loop. So let's see if we can patch this. So, of course, we want to make sure enable chaining is off and we'll select one, two, three, four, five. Okay, relatively straightforward. There's no complex curvature in this one. So I would be surprised if at this point the patch hadn't worked. but Good news is it did, so that's good. Press OK, and there we have it. We have a nice addition to our surfaces here. Cool. Now we'll do another one, which is over here. And let's create a new sketch on the side. And if you remember, uh, in one of the previous videos, we had created the arc all the way down till here. So I'm going to find that sketch. So if I just click on this one here, you can see that this is the patch that is being highlighted, which means this is probably the sketch. I'm going to go ahead, oops, I'm going to go ahead and open the sketch folder and locate that sketch. So that sketch is this one. So if you just right click on that sketch in the timeline, 
it'll also show you that it's over here. So sketch 120. So I'm going to make that visible. But remember, our active sketch is still the latest one. So it's not like we are going back and editing the previous sketch. We're just going to copy an element from there. So uh, we've made that visible, which means this line has become visible. So I'm just going to take that, press Control C, hide the sketch, and now Control V, which means that element has now come into our current sketch, which is awesome. So we've just been reusing the elements. OK, press OK. And now you have that beautiful curve. And now what we want to do is we want to take a point from there, and then we're going to take it backwards. So fit point spline somewhere over there. So make sure that cursor turns into an X, which means you've uh, latched onto that line. OK, and then we're going to just press somewhere there. And then we go on the top view. And of course, this needs to be all the way at the back. So again, slightly, just slightly out of the plane of symmetry. Cool. And now we can see that, of course, this is still a straight line, but there's not a lot of curvature. So what we can try and do is we can try and add the curvature from this view and then alter it uh, again from the side view. So active tangent, and again, because this one is close to the plane of symmetry, we actually want to try and make this as flat as possible. Okay, and in this case, I'm going to try and do match that. So we'll bring it up also a little bit to the side. And there we go. Cool. So from the back, this looks pretty good. But I do suspect that something doesn't look right from the side. Let's have a look. Okay, so it makes sense, right? Because we actually added a lot of curvature to this tangent here, and therefore it's also gone ahead and done that in this one. So what we need to do is find a slightly different way of doing this. So let's bring this one down back to where it looks acceptable. And this one needs to come a little bit below. And now again, if we go back to the back view, we'll see that this again doesn't look very good. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and make this uh, move left to right from this view. So that means that we're not affecting it as much from the side view. So if I just do left and right from here, and now if we go there, so obviously that's not very good. And if we try and do it like this, So we need to bring this down for sure. That one also needs to come down for sure. <clears throat> so we're actually trying to extend this as much as we can to follow that curve. Again, so this is me doing it now in a slightly simpler manner. Alternatively, what this would actually require is a three point fit point spline. So currently, as, as I said, I usually like to do two points splines, um, just because they add less complexity. But in a case like this, where you can see clearly it's not matching anything um, very correctly. So if I do something like that, see, I'm personally happy with how this looks. But if you wanted to make this more exact, I would definitely recommend doing fit point spline, but not just two points, but three points, and then removing them in 3D space. So for me, this is okay. And I'm just going to try and horizontal and vertical, remove that. Um, and that looks pretty good to me. So just play around with the two tangents. And if it doesn't work out or you don't like the, how that looks, make sure you use three points. OK, so I'm happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and now close the surface by clicking there and clicking there. Make sure you keep saving. And again, I'm just going to add a little bit of curvature here. We don't want things to be a straight line. OK, go ahead and press Finish Sketch. Now, at this point, again, we can do a loft or we can do a, a patch. Um, 
In order to do a patch, you can already notice that it won't let you do the patch right away because this is a single spline and we've not yet cut it. So the proper way to do the patch would be to go back to the sketch, use the break tool, and then we can break the tool and then this would become one, two, three, four, and there we have another five as well. Um, but let's say you're lazy or you don't want to do the patch because um, I'm feeling lazy today, I'm a bit tired. I want to do the loft, um, but remembering that the loft would work only if these two were the same surface. So the trick we used in a previous video was to stitch these two together. Okay, and now we can go ahead and loft this from, he uh, from here to here, and then use that and that as the guide rail. So let's see if that works. And if it doesn't work, we'll obviously have to go and patch it. So we'll do profile one, profile two, and the rails are going to be this one and that one. Perfect, so that worked just as we expected. And there we have it. So we've got our surfaces there. So again, hopefully this was short and sweet, um, just because I am a little bit tired today. Uh, but hopefully uh, Thursday we'll do some more stuff, uh, a little bit, a few more surfaces. So hopefully that will be really nice. And I'm going to try my best to do the YouTube Live next Monday, which is the 21st of August. Uh, on that note, hopefully I'll see you on Thursday. And please do make sure you um, write your questions in that Q&A uh, Q form on Google. And it's completely anonymous. You can ask me whatever you like. Please do like, comment, and subscribe. It does really help out. And uh, for today, thank you so much. And uh, have a great rest of the week. Take care.